Hello and welcome back. In this video, you're going to learn how to create dynamic dashboards for your projects and other daily tasks using Microsoft Power BI. As you can see on your screen here, we have a dynamic dashboard for project issue management. By dynamic, I mean if you go and select any of the months from the chart in here, everything on this dashboard will be updated. For example, we have the total cost by issue owner, which is the team member too, which in March he has a total of three thousand US dollars, and this case is or this issue is open in here, and the number of issues by owner, the total cost by status, whether the issue is open or closed, and how much does it cost? As you can see, the different charts in here could be filtered by these tile slicers. For example, if I go and pick only the closed issues. The details for the closed issues will be shown. If I go and pick the open issues, the details for the open issues will be shown in here. If I select both of them, so the information will be updated on this dashboard for both types of issues, whether they are closed or whether they are still in progress. In addition to that, if we go and select the issue owner or the project team member names, for example, let's select project manager, as you can see, the project manager has one issue here in month February and the total cost for month July for the issues related to the project manager will be 135 US dollars. And again, in August 2023, the issues which were owned by the project manager costed $980 for the company. In addition to that, we can see on the tornado diagram in here, it's only filtered out for the project manager. And again, Number of issues by the owner, the project manager has one closed issue and two of the issues owned by the project manager are still open and needs to be closed. In this video, you're going to learn how to extract data from multiple sources and how to connect it in Microsoft Power BI. And finally, how to create dynamic visualizations like this. My name is Qadir from Engineeringly. Let's get started and let me take you through the step-by-step -step process of creating such dynamic visualizations. So once we open Microsoft Power BI, here is the screen that will appear before you. In order to import the data, we can get the data from here from different types of sources. For example, in the recent sources, I have imported data usually from Microsoft Excel and there are other types of sources that you can get the data from, for example, SQL Server, CSV, Web, and any other types of sources. In this example and in this video, we are going to use the Excel workbook. So what I will do is click the Excel workbook either from here or from here. It will take us to our sources from here. I'll go and from my desktop, I'll select the issue costs and I'll open this source. And another source that we have is the file is called the issue description. I'll open, I'll import that file into Microsoft Power BI as well. So what I will do is I will select this one and I will load this one into Microsoft Power BI. So one of our sources are loaded into Microsoft Power BI. Let's go and select another one, which is the issues description. I'll open this one and once this is open, I'll select this one, select the sheet and then go to transform data. And in here, what I will do is I will link it to other source or other worksheet that we imported into Microsoft Power BI. Well, first of all, what we will do is we'll do a little bit of cleaning if required. For example, if the things here do not look the way we like it or the way we want it, we have to do a cleaning. For example, this is date, and as you can see, the icon in here, it's shown as date, so no problem with that. But if we go to here, as you can see, the costs are not shown as costs. So what I will do is I'll select this one, and I'll click this one, I'll select this, uh, I'll add a new step, and this will be changed to cost in here. And next thing is to merge the queries. I will merge this query or this sheet with our issue details sheet. So what I will do is I'll go to merge queries and in here, 
query number one is given in here, which is the cost sheet, and uh, query number two will be the issue details. Next, what I will do is I'll select the columns which are the same or the keys which are the same in both the files so they can be connected to each other. I'll select this in here. And as you can see in the join kind in here, it is left outer and the description is given all from the first matching from the second. So for example, if there are some entries in here which are available in here but not available in here, it will not be shown in our final worksheet or the final dashboard that we were working with. There are other types of joins in here as well, which we might explore in our upcoming videos in Microsoft Power BI or any other data analytics video uh, we would be working using Microsoft Excel or Power BI. So all the things seems to be okay in here. I'll click okay. So which of the following items do I want to see in here? So in here, the only things that I don't want to see is the ID and all the other things should be shown. Let's select the uh, status and everything. And this should be remained as expand and click OK. The ID is detected in another sheet and all the information is connected to the other sheet. So since everything looks OK, I'll go to load and apply. So now both of the sheets will be coming into the Microsoft Power BI and we can create our visuals using both of the sheets. So as we saw in there, we had a column chart which showed the amount of money spent every single month. So in here, what we will do is we will select a column chart from here, for example, and this for this column chart, we will have the total cost. And the next thing is that we will have the occurrence date. We will press the drop downs in here and select only year and month. So as you can see in here, we have the year and month given in here. So the next type of visual that we would like to see in here was a tornado diagram or a funnel diagram. And this one, we had the amount of money spent by each team member. So in here, we'll have the total cost and we will have the owner or the team member name. So as you can see, we have the team member names and everything. I will leave it for now as it is and we will format it later on. Next thing is to insert a donut chart for the number of open and closed issues. So in here, I'll go and select uh, status and next thing will be the issue name, for example. So the only thing is in here that we should take the issue name and description or description to the values in here. Only then we can see our donut chart. And last but not the least in here is to insert a number of issues, whether they were open or closed by team member. For that purpose, I'll select a stacked bar chart. In this chart, what we will have is we will have the team member names, which is the owner in here. And again, we will have the issue names in here. So the issue names should be shown on the X axis. And since we want to see the issue names by close and open, it should be a stacked column. So what we will do is from here, we will select status. So as you can see, the open and closed are shown in here. I'll adjust it to the right a little bit in here, and that will do it. And last but not least in here is to insert a column chart for the number of closed and open issues overall, or the total cost by closed issues and the total cost by open issues. So thing number one will be to select the status and thing number two will go and select the total cost. So in here we can see the total cost for the open issues, something around 7,000 or maybe 7,500. And the total cost for the closed issues is a little bit lower than 2,000 US dollars in here. And next thing is to add a slicer in here. The slicer should be, for example, let's select only status in here. We can do the same for the issue owner. And for haste in our work, we will only suffice with only one slicer in here. So uh, next and final thing would be to add 
a title in here. We can add the title from the text box in here. Click the text box and the text box I'll write down, for example, issue management dashboard. So I'll select the, the, we will start the formatting right now. And I'll make this a little bit smaller in here and select all the text and maybe make it bold. You can change the font from here. You can increase the size, for example, let's make it 18. And uh, that will be enough for this one. You can change the color as well. For example, let's select this bluish color. And next thing would be to bring it to the top in here. The slicer in here, it should be, as we saw in the demo previously, for the slicer, we will make it a styles. So for that purpose, we will go to in here in the visuals, and then we will go to the format visual. In the slicer setting, the style should be tiles. So we can select from the open, or maybe from the closed, or maybe select both of them. And now in here, we will go to the first one, click it. We will go to format the visual. So in the x-axis in here, we will go and the title which is given in here as month, we will hide this as we don't need it right now. We only need the years and the months. And if you want to a little bit format, for example, the, the x-axis values in here, for example, let's increase the size or maybe make them bolder or whatever you like. And for the y-axis in here, we will go and we will turn off the title and again, we will come here, we will turn off the y-axis totally. And the next thing is to go to the columns. If you want to change the color and everything, we will select a color that matches our brand guideline and everything. We will select this color. So you want to add data labels, you go and let's turn this on. As you can see, the data labels are shown 0.3K or 300. But we want to do a little bit of formatting. For example, the data labels, the values, uh, the display units should be not in thousands, it should be none. So in here, as you can see, we have 320, 880. For the title in here, as you can see, go to general and the title, we can edit it, for example, cost by year and month. And that will be enough. Let's make it a little bit bolder and you can change the color and everything. And in this tornado chart in here, what we don't want to see is the conversion rate. Right now, it assumes that the 4,000 in here is the 100% and others are shown as a percentage of that, but we don't want to see it. We only want to see the amount by each team member. And in the data labels, as you can see, we have 0K in here. We don't know how much is that. So under the values, we will go and display units again. It should be none. So right now we have all the values. We can make it bolder and maybe increase its size. And in addition to that, you can change the color of these uh, bars in here. So in order to change the colors from here, go and select any color that you would like to see in here, for example, Again, I'll select this red color from here. So by doing the same method, what you can do is you can change the formatting and everything on all of your visuals in here. So I hope you have found the content of the video helpful. And for more content like this, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and following us on Instagram or LinkedIn. Thank you very much for watching.